session, the time, you know, sure. the you can take about 20 minutes I'll or so. Minutes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. So good morning, everybody, um, and thank you very much for that kind introduction. So I'm going to present a case study of some work that is underway in partnership between my organisation, ARCAMS, Historic Scotland and English Heritage, to produce guidance on the capture and preparation for archival deposit of 3D laser scan data, and um, in particular in relation to archaeology and cultural heritage. And our work is really seeking to achieve a balance between the ease of use for the, the user community and the depositors in terms of preparing their archive for deposit, but also balancing the, the level of documentation sought by archives for preservation purposes. So I'll begin by um, introducing my, my organization and our partners and the origins of the project and how we think um, our approach has the potential to have lasting impact um, in producing solutions for the long-term accessibility and usability for 3D laser scan data. And um, I'll summarize some key approaches already identified by the community and then describe our ongoing work and um, present what we've identified, we hope, as a key solution to um, this problem. So um, my organization is the Royal Commission for the Ancient Historical Monuments of Scotland. We were established in around 1908 in response to widespread concern about the destruction of historical monuments around the UK. And so now for over 100 years we've been surveying recording and collecting information about the constantly evolving landscape of Scotland. We have um, teams of archaeologists, architectural historians and surveyors who are out actively in the field at the moment um, recording this changing landscape and the, the built environment of Scotland. And we also hold, as, as we've heard, the National Collection for the Built Environment of Scotland, which documents the human interaction in um, the environment. And as I've said, I'm responsible for our digital collections and to try to make sure that they remain accessible for at least another 100 years. At least that's our aim. And um, our, our website, Camwell, that you can see here, provides information on more than 300,000 places in Scotland. So um, we've been actively collecting digital archives since the early 1990s. And our external deposits come largely from the commercial archaeology sector, which you can see illustrated here, uh, people in holes with shovels. Um, and uh, the commercial archaeology sector, these businesses are contractually obliged by their commissioning agents to deposit all their documentary archive relating to fieldwork in Scotland with us. But we also take on archives from architectural practices and receive deposits from interested members of the public. Um, so this means that we have an extremely diverse range of information types that we hold in our collections, ranging from um, documentary reports and theses to geophysical survey, to, um, topographical survey, visualization, digital video, um, interactive multimedia, and, and 3D laser scan data, which I'm going to come on to. And uh, the priorities for ARCAM's digital archive our, our collecting priorities are really to collect all of the primary ma material relating to archaeological and architectural fieldwork undertaken in Scotland and Scotland's territorial waters, and any secondary interpretive data where the geographical fo coverage focuses on Scotland. So we currently curate more than 250,000 items in our collection, and we have uh, probably a similar number of uh, digital objects awaiting in jest. And, um, this combined equates to around 26 terabytes of data, which is reasonably sizable um, in relation to our, our counterparts in Scotland. Um, last year, we received more than 30,000 items from external depositors alone. And in addition to this, we also have a rolling digitization program, which produces between one and 2,000 new digital objects each month. So um, <clears throat> with reasonable levels of accuracy, we can predict then that from our external depositors, uh, we'll receive around two terabytes each year, from our internally generated uh, archive from my colleagues in our survey department, around four terabytes a year. And we don't currently have a handle on the volume of data produced by the architectural community or indeed their backlog. Um, it's unlike the, the archaeological community, we would be a lot more selective in terms of the range of data they produce and what we would want to, to capture. So. 
Over the last few years, we've experienced a, a sharp increase in the uptake of terrestrial laser scan data, which I'm going to be talking to you about today, within the architectural community in Scotland. And 3D laser scan data is becoming an important and a sizable um, element of the historic environment record. So, um, both through terrestrial and airborne laser scanning. So it's our responsibility in ARCAMS as the, the national collection for this type of material to ensure that the, this widespread capture of 3D data is, um, is deposited in a trusted digital repository and looked after so that it's accessible to future generations. So very briefly, for those of you who might not be familiar um, with the term 3D laser scanning, this uh, really, at the basic level, refers to the process of mapping anything from a very small object to an entire landscape using tools which fire a laser at the, the target object and by recording the time it takes for the laser to bounce off the object and return to the tool are able to record points across its surface and combine these to produce um, a very detailed topographic map of the surface of the object. So, as you can imagine, when you're dealing with scales up to entire landscapes, this can produce very large and complex data sets. And the fast pace of technological change in this area and the absence of um, what we feel is an existing mature and workable approach to its long-term preservation and um, maintenance places this important record at risk and our colleagues and depositors have been increasingly turning to us at the Commission looking for advice and guidance on how best to manage this risk. So despite um, our relatively small size and lack of resource, we've been prompted to act. So um, we, we got together with our, our partners, which I'm going to introduce now. So our first partner is Historic Scotland, and they're very much a natural partner for us in, in much of our work in the Commission. And um, they're an agency of the Scottish Government that's charged with safeguarding the nation's historic environment and promoting its understanding and enjoyment. And through the work of Historic Scotland's Scottish 10 project, they're world leaders in the deployment of 3D laser scanning technology. And this project, uh, this Scottish 10 project, sets out to scan five of Scotland's UNESCO World Heritage Sites and five international sites, and uh, some of which you can see here on my slide. And so they've been scientifically and comprehensively documenting these important historic sites. And beginning with the survey of Mount Rushmore in 2010, they've now gone on to record more, many more than the 10 sites that were originally planned and produced um, te many tens of terabytes of data. And you might see among the sites that I've highlighted here the, the Indian site of Rani Kivav, which was recorded in partnership with the um, Indian Archaeological Survey. And um, this is situated in Gujarat state, and UNESCO describes it as one of the most magnificent, magnificent examples of a, of a step well. Um, and I would like to encourage you to visit their website and have a look at their data and see how you can access that and interact with it. And the, the objectives of this Scottish 10 project and our partners in Historic Scotland is to, to digitally re record these important historical sites for the benefit of future generations so that they can provide digital models and, um, and data to site staff so they can better care for these heritage sites and to create accurate 3D surveys of the sites for future development of in innovative world-class research. And with this in mind, the project team were very much concerned that they conform to archival best practices and they, they capture and prepare their data sets in a way that will facilitate their deposit in a trusted digital repository and its uh, long-term use and reuse. Our second partner in this work is English Heritage and they very much fulfill the same role as Historic Scotland but for England. And um, that brings our group UK-wide coverage. So English Heritage Geospatial Imaging Team carries out metric surveys of the historic um, English Heritage estate using laser scanning, but also uh, photogrammetry and other multi-image based survey techniques. The team takes the lead in providing advice to the external commercial sector on heritage applications of unmanned aerial um, platforms and building information modeling. The team's got extensive experience in image-based survey approaches and have produced um, many volumes of uh, guidance documents to the community. So consequently, we found ourselves each um, at an, at an inter intersection of these different research uh, processes, each partner facing a, a different aspect of this challenge based on our shared commitment to the, the long-term usability, use and reuse of this, these important data sets. Um, that we're either collecting, creating, or commissioning. 
So it was natural, we found, to come together informally to try and find a practical solution. And the challenge that we're, we're seeking to address really is um, no different to, to that for any other um, digital object, despite the complexity of 3D laser scan data. It's really to, to try to mitigate um, hardware and software op obsolescence by identifying suitable surrogates that um, do not result in significant loss and by adequately describing the objects and the processes um, involved in their creation, uh, ensure that they will be continually understandable and um, able to be reused in the future. So what's the problem with the laser scanning data that we have and what we're trying to solve? Well, from the anecdotal reports to ourselves at the Commission and the active experience of trying to ensure its deposit with us, it's, it's clearly evident that current best practice guidance for the level of documentation in order to ensure this long-term accessibility of 3D laser scan data was being found to be far too burdensome to produce from our data creators. And this was having a really negative impact. And the impact was such that either the data was deposited without any metadata at all, or it wasn't deposited. Because they, they, just, um, they just couldn't resource the, the production of all the metadata that was necessary. And unlike uh, my experience in the higher education sector of repositories, this isn't, this isn't a challenge of um, advocacy. The archive, archaeological community hold um, preservation by record as a central tenant due to the often destructive nature of their research processes. But it's, it's really complexities in the structure of the commercial archaeological sector in Scotland that unfortunately I don't have time to go into now, but really mean that there is no time, there's no time at all to, to prepare archive for deposit. Um, and especially not the, the extensive time that would be necessary to prepare it in a way that we're currently seeking. So, the, and, and in addition to this, the, the transient nature of the built heritage environment that's subject to continuous change and modification, but also subject to complete catastrophic loss as a result of human or natural disaster means that what we have to aim for is the maximum reusability of this, these data sets. And although the process of scanning isn't in, in itself destructive, it's often not possible to return to a site to rescan if data is lost because of the potential loss of the site altogether. And in this way, the documentary archive may become the primary resource. So um, in balancing these, these two elements, the, the the, the major importance of ensuring the, the proper uh, documentation of this data and it's deposited in, in trusted repositories balanced with the fact that our community cannot fulfill that. Um, we, we were really presented with a, a, a big challenge. And just to give you an idea of the, the, the kind of descriptive, um, the, the metadata fields that we're trying to gather from our users, I thought I would skip through um, a couple of these forms now and some of them run off the page, but it was important that you would be able to read any of those fields to, to have it at that level. And just to bear in mind as I'm skipping through these, that, um, that each site a, scan, uh, a team scans might include multiple point clouds. So it's not necessarily the case that for each site that you scan, you might only need to produce these metadata forms once. You may need to do it many times. So I'll just skip through these very quickly with an eye on the time. So the approach of the, the project has been from the very beginning um, very much from the ground up. And um, well, I'm not myself an expert in 3D laser scanning. Uh, our partners and our depositors are. And our depositors um, are also our target audience for the future reuse. So they deposit their data with us and they reuse their colleagues' data. And by gathering um, these experts both in... Um, the creation of the data, but also in understanding exactly what's needed in order to reuse somebody else's data. We've managed to gather together um, all the relevant knowledge and experience. So um, we, we began by trying to gather these um, initial user requirements from the practitioner community, and we held a workshop in collaboration with the Digital Preservation Coalition, which is a membership organization in the, in the UK, and we held that last year. And we brought together um, representatives of the archaeological community, archaeological archiving, digital preservation, national cultural heritage organizations, but also, and importantly, representatives from the 
companies providing the hardware and software for the capture of the laser scanning. And our aim was to, to educate data creators and the software and hardware pro producers about the challenges we were facing and to seek their input and consensus on how to take this forward, but also, and in particular, to influence the software and hardware producers of the laser scanning equipment to produce developments that will make the export of this metadata much more simple and convenient for users into the future. So from, from the beginning of our work, we were committed to ensure buy-in from depositors, reusers of the data, and the software and hardware producers, because we knew that without this um, level of buy-in across the sector, any, um, any product of our work would, would necessarily end up being niche and, and therefore not, not really worthwhile. Sorry, I've skipped forward one too many times. So following on from this event and um, the, the options going forward were very clear. Our depositors told us that the status quo was untenable. So either we must define a much paired back metadata scheme for them to complete for us, or we would need to work with the hardware and software companies to make sure that exporting the metadata we needed was much more simple and convenient. So we looked um, next at uh, a number of metadata schemes that have been proposed over the last deco decade or so to address the need to adequately describe 3D laser scan data and facilitate its ongoing understandability and reuse. And um, what we, the, the extension that we settled on um, was the, the extension to CDOC CRM, CDOC CRM DIG, which was developed by the European Commission funded um, uh, 3D CoForm, seemed to be offering the most promise in terms of its ability to capture provenance metadata and um, be able to describe the material heritage environment as observed by archaeologists and the, the actions in, in measuring the physical pro uh, properties and capturing sensor data in the material environment. However, we found that, um, like the, the metadata we were seeking to capture, it was in a very real way unimplementable without considerable resource and effort. And without the development of interfaces and automation, which neither we nor the archaeological community could support. Um, so uh, we, we settled on uh, E57 as a very pragmatic answer. Now, E57 is a, an interchange, a vendor neutral interchange format developed out of the ASTM standards uh, organization. It's um, a very lightweight format. It allows for the storing of point clouds, images, metadata. Um, it supports a wide range of features like gridded data, multiple coordinated, multiple coordinate systems, and, and, and many other things that means that as an interchange format, it's, um, it's got a high level of functionality and a high level of take up. And the, the representation on the, the standards committee from the commercial sector um, lends it uh, great potential, but Nevertheless, it was developed, as I said, as an interchange format, so not as a working format and certainly not as a preservation format. Um, and in, in its um, initial development, it seeks to uh, achieve a minimalist approach. So it, it deliberately excluded the kind of vendor-specific calibration parameters that we would want to include from its standard. However, um, we feel that the the, the, the sensor, oh, sorry. That's I'm being told to, to get off the stage. Um, so we feel that the, the, excuse me. The step is to develop an archival extension to the E57 format, sorry about that. Um, incorporating and building on the work of 3D CoForm and CDOC CRM DIG. Um, to, to bring together the best elements of both of these standards. So um, we've already approached the E57 subcommittee on data interoperability with this uh, suggestion, and it's been very warmly received. So the next steps for us are to, to seek support and partners to try and reali realize this ambition and um, secure support for the design of this extension so that we can t continue to engage with data creators and ensure this approach um, meets their needs so that it will be available for quick adoption in the future. Um, so uh, my, my goal here today was to, to raise awareness about our, our small activity and to seek future collaborations that will enable us to reach this ambition um, in a much more timely fashion than our, our limited resources have so far allowed us. So uh, thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>